Hi everyone, my name is Simon Glavin and I'm a bioinformatician at the University of Melbourne in Australia and I'm also one of the administrators of Galaxy Australia, a large public galaxy server. Today I'm going to be talking to you about running jobs on remote resources with Pulsar or a way of getting Galaxy to use remote compute resources not local to Galaxy. Just some requirements before we start, um, we re kind of recommend that you would understand a little bit about Galaxy installation and how to do it using Ansible. Um, and also if you've never used Ansible before, there's um, a good tutorial and a slide deck on that as well. And if you are going to do the tutorial later on, you'll also need a server or a virtual machine on which to deploy Pulsar. And hopefully that server or virtual machine is separate to your Galaxy server. Right, some of the things we hope that you'll be able to answer at the end of this uh, slide deck and hands-on tutorial is how does Pulsar work and how can I deploy it? Um, we'd like you to have an understanding of what Pulsar is and how it works, um, how to install and configure a Pulsar server on a remote Linux machine, and be able to get Galaxy to send jobs to a remote Pulsar server. All right, so what are heterogeneous compute resources? And what do I mean by heterogeneous? Well, basically, I mean that we can have a large Galaxy system, we can have a number of different compute resources available to it, and they can have different operating systems or versions, um, they can have different sets of users or different groups and different users and groups could have access to different compute resources. For example, if you're running a Galaxy server at a university, some of your users may be able to have access to HPC. And how do you make that available for them to use, considering it, it's probably going to be running a different operating system to the one that you're running your Galaxy server on? Data accessibility is another, another issue. So if you have a compute resource in a different data hall in your university somewhere and doesn't have access to the Galaxy uh, file system or the temporary job working directories that Galaxy would normally use, then how do you get to use that compute resource? Do you have full administrative control? If you're um, using your university's HPC system, then the answer is probably no, you don't have full administrative control. How do you get Galaxy to use those resources if you don't have um, administrative control. And sometimes they may be completely separate physical location. For example, in Galaxy Australia, most of our stuff is located in Perth, but if I want to run a job using some compute resources in Melbourne, which is about 3000 kilometers away, how would I go about doing that? So these are the kind of things that we're talking about when we say heterogeneous compute resources. It means we've got different groups of compute resources that may have different accesses, and different administrations, different operating systems, et cetera, in different locations. But to be able to use it, Galaxy expects that everything is running on a single operating system. So that the versions and the, of all the dependencies and everything can be the same. And that we have a shared file system with fixed paths. They need to have access to the Galaxy files as well as the temporary job working directories. And maybe this is not always the case. For example, in Australia, um, we used to be, our head node used to be located in Brisbane, but now it's located in Perth. But we want to be able to utilize compute resources spread out all over the country. And so how do we go about doing this? Well, there's a partial solution in Galaxy, which is the command line interface job runner. Um, so if you've worked through the, the Galaxy tutorials up till now, you'll know that there's in the job conf, you can have different job runners. And one of those is the command line interface one where you can say SSH into a remote machine and then submit jobs with um, the command line interface, say using SBatch or QSub, um, if you're using um, Slurm or PBS Talk, etc. However, this still depends on having all the file systems being shared between the remote compute resource and the Galaxy server, and this may not be the case. So this is where Pulsar comes in. And Pulsar is Galaxy's remote job management system. It was written by John Chilton as part of the um, Galaxy project itself and um, is a system uh, whereby Galaxy can send uh, job metadata and job input data to a remote compute system somewhere. Pulsar can pick them up, run the jobs, collect the results and resulting metadata and send it all back to Galaxy again. And it doesn't require shared file systems. It just requires that the Galaxy server be able to talk to the Pulsar server over the network. Pulsar can run on any OS, including Windows, which is kind of handy if you've got a, a Windows only command line tool that you want to be able to run on your Galaxy server. Um, there's multiple modes of operation for every environment in terms of different firewalls, etc. And uh, Pulsar can be configured to run in multiple different ways to suit your needs. So the architecture of Pulsar is that Pulsar server runs on a remote resource. 
i.e. the head node of a cluster or just a, a remote machine somewhere. And then the Galaxy Pulsar job runner in the job conf file is the Pulsar client. And communication between Pulsar client, i.e. the Galaxy server and the Pulsar server is either via HTTP, via REST API, or via um, advanced message queue protocol. And file transport uh, from one machine to another is dependent on the communication method. And can we use things like um, curl or HTTP file transfers or um, SCP or rsync, etc. So the architecture of all this kind of looks like this diagram here. So this little green box here is the Galaxy server. We have Galaxy running and um, it's talking to a Slurm queue to send jobs out to a, a bunch of compute nodes. Um, there's a shared file system between the compute nodes and the, uh, and the Galaxy server. So this is the local Galaxy cluster, I guess you'd call it. And inside the Galaxy server, we have a job conf file. And in the job conf file, we've defined various things like uh, job runners. So um, the Slurm job runner, the local job runner, and this thing called the Pulsar job runner, which is actually the Pulsar client. And in the destinations, we've set up a bunch of destinations like the local destination, the Pulsar destination, and the Slurm destination. And by default, we send everything to Slurm, except for the case of if a user wants to run Trinity or a user wants to run Spades, we've decided that actually these tools can be sent to the Pulsar destination. So if a user comes along and decides to run um, Spades, for example, the job, according to the job comp file, um, Spades will be sent to the Pulsar destination, which then uses the Pulsar job runner. And that then contacts the Pulsar server. Well, if it's in rest mode, the Galaxy server will then just contact the Pulsar server, say, hey, I've got a job for you. Here's uh, the job metadata, and here is your input data. Please take care of this for me. And the Pulsar server can do numerous things. It can run it just locally on, on, the, on the same machine that the Pulsar server is running on, or it can submit it to a queue in the remote location, be that HPC or even your own cluster in the cloud. And then once those jobs are finished, the Pulsar server collects all of the results and sends them back to Galaxy. So Pulsar can operate in a few different modes. The first one being the RESTful mode. And basically that means that the Pulsar server on the remote computer runs a REST API on a web server. And the Pulsar server listens to the API and the Galaxy server can initiate a connection to the Pulsar server by just sending it a REST API request. So HTTP encoded URL. This is really good for where um, a firewall or open ports are not concerned. So um, you have complete control over the Pulsar server and you don't mind having a, a web server with some open ports. So uh, port 443, for example, open. It doesn't require any external dependencies to be run in this mode. So you don't need any other intermediary servers between them. Galaxy can talk directly to Pulsar over the um, REST API. The other way of running Pulsar in the main is by advanced message queuing protocol. And in this case, we have an intermediate uh, server program called an AMQP server, such so as something like a Rabbit MQ or something like that. We'll sit in between the Galaxy server and the Pulsar server. And then both Pulsar and Galaxy talk to the AMQP server. In this case, Galaxy would say, hey, AMQP server, I have a job. Uh, this job is for Pulsar server. Can you please hold all the details of this job? And then um, that will be put into the, uh, into the queue for that particular server. And then the Pulsar server periodically checks with the AMQP server to say, hey, is there a job for me? And the AMQP server in this case will say, yep, Galaxy's just given me a job for you. Here's all the details. And then the Pulsar server will grab the med job metadata, grab the locations for the files, and we'll pull them in. And this is really good for where the remote compute has uh, a strong firewall and there's no way of getting around it. And so in this case, because Pulsar will be initiating connections out to the uh, Rabbit server or the um, Q server, uh, we don't need to poke any holes in the firewall. Um, it's also kind of useful for networks with bad connectivity um, as we can set retries and things like that to, um, and we can use things like curl for file transfers, which are probably a bit more um, resumable than HTTP file transfers. And occasionally you may want to run Pulsar in embedded mode, which means that you're running Pulsar on the same node that you're running Galaxy on. And this is sometimes good for um, copying input data sets 
from non-shared file systems to shared file systems or a, um, a manipulating paths around, etc. There's a lot of documentation on this if you wish to look into it more. Pulsar needs to stage the files that it needs to work on. And so when Pulsar gets a job, it actually needs the job metadata. So what tool we're going to be using, what version of the tool we're going to be using, all the parameters that are set for that particular tool, and then which input data sets we're going to run on. And then it needs some way of getting those input data sets off the file system on the Galaxy server onto its own local file system. And it can do that in a few different ways. When Pulsar is running in REST API mode, Galaxy can push the data out to the Pulsar server, um, or the Pulsar server can pull it from the Galaxy server. Pulsar can use libcurl for doing a more robust transfers with resume capability. But when running in um, AMQP mode, the only way of job file staging is by pull. So it means the Pulsar needs to be able to curl the data out of the Galaxy server. Okay, so dependency management for Pulsar. And this is where Pulsar gets a job and say it's for um, BWA mem and it's BWA mem version 0.7.18. And Pulsar says, oh, I don't have that installed. How do I go about getting it? And this is where Pulsar can automatically go and get them. And so it has a similar dependency resolve to config to Galaxy. Um, we can set up Pulsar to um, auto install Conda dependencies or um, pull in our singularity containers or our Docker containers to run that particular tool or that particular version of that particular tool. Um, in the tutorial, we'll be setting up Pulsar to use um, Conda dependencies. So it's fairly simple to get it to use singularity. And job management. So Pulsar can run various different uh, job managers to facilitate uh, the actual running of the jobs. So if we're going to be just running it locally, on the Pulsar server, we can use um, the Qt Python job manager, which will allow us to uh, send the Pulsar server numerous jobs at once, but that queuing system will only run one at a time. Or we can send them to um, the Qt Drama manager, which will then forward on or submit jobs to a local queue for the Pulsar server, say like a local Slurm queue or a uh, PBS Talk queue or some other kind of HPC. DRM system, or we can set it to the Qt CLI so we can get um, Pulsar to submit jobs using QSub or SBatch, or we can now uh, send it to um, run on a Condor cluster, which is pretty cool. And so after taking Galaxy Australia, well, this is the old picture now, it's all located in Perth, but up until recently it was all located in Brisbane. So our main queue and our storage, main storage and our main compute nodes were all in Brisbane. But now by using Pulsar, we've been able to utilize compute resources located all around the country. And you can see here, we've got our head node in Brisbane. We have a Pulsar node in Perth, a couple in Melbourne, and we were in the process of setting up some in Adelaide and Canberra and Sydney. And also we can, if we want to set them up in Darwin and Tasmania. Um, in actual fact, this can be run internationally as well as what happens in Europe. Europe has a rather extensive Pulsar network where their head node is based in Freiburg in Germany. However, they have Pulsar nodes dotted all around the EU. And they also have a Pulsar node located in Melbourne in Australia. And that was pretty much just to prove that we could run it all the way across the globe. Right, there's a lot of resources for Pulsar. Um, there's the read the doc site. Um, the actual source code for Pulsar is part of the Galaxy project. There is um, an Ansible role for installing Pulsar available as well. Um, and in the tutorial, we'll be working through that to install Pulsar on a remote server and then get Galaxy to talk to it. Uh, some of the key points we'd like you to think about are that Pulsar allows you to easily add geographically distributed compute resources to, into your Galaxy instance. It also works well in situations where the compute resources cannot share storage pools. Thank you.